and everyone. Can you hear me fine? Can you hear me with this microphone? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. We have finished. We have finished the meeting of the finance track of finance ministers and treasury ministers and central bank governors. We think it has been a great meeting where we ratify the importance of G20 as a mechanism to coordinate policies at global level. We have President Macri among us at, by the end of the meeting, who has uh, made a few closing remarks. This meeting, this G20 meeting, finds us, Argentinians, with an intense agenda of domestic reforms, reforms that have made Argentina preside G20 only two years after being in a default situation. And now it finds the members of G20 and the 2020 per se, after 10 years of uh, deep financial crisis, and it would have been much deeper if it hadn't been for the G20 presence. And we think that the working of this group is key to coordinate certain policies at international levels. At this meeting, we have reasserted the importance of international trade as a key factor for the growth, the production, innovation, and the cre employment creation. And we ratified that we have to continue, di continue having dialogues to continue consensus. So it's a very clear message and a determinant message in terms of the benefits of international trade. As far as this Argentinian G20, Argentina has presented three priorities related to the future of work, the future of employment, infrastructure for growth and for development, food safety, and gender agenda, which is transversal within the financial track. The priorities we have been working on are the future of employment and infrastructure for development, where we have a map to try to generate mechanisms that would help um, palliate the deficit of infrastructure that accumulates throughout the world year after year. But the future of work that is also um, related to a menu of options that we're going to work on the finance um, ministerial meeting in July, uh, what we want to achieve is to generate mechanisms so that in the world that are, there is a sustainable growth, an inclusive growth. And for that, we will continue working throughout this year during our presidency. So with that, I will will give the floor to Federico for his comments. Thank you, Nicolas. I ratified what Nicolas says, and I would like to emphasize that the level of discussion was very, very intense, very high. It was surprisingly so, and we had a very rich debate to work on different areas. Let me focus on two central aspects we have worked on very strongly in different sessions. One was, of course, what Nicolas said, the question of international trade that was essential. There was a lot of tension. The focus was very constructed of all participants involved in this understanding that trade is good for all countries, and we have to deepen that in a way that is a win-win situation for all. As you know, the world has reached this presidency with a um, growth um, 
process. World economy has reached a 4% growth that was prior to the financial crisis. Uh, during the last two years, the discussion was on how to improve growth. And that was, uh, and, and in this conference, we haven't devoted so much to that because uh, we were talking about the vulnerabilities of the system and getting ready so that growth can sustain. So it was a big debate and a big discussion on precisely what are the vulnerabilities of the world and how to get ready for that. One of the key points is the process of normalization, monetary normalization everybody is anticipating. So that was a very useful discussion. And the other point I would like to highlight, uh, which I devoted a lot of, we, we devoted a lot of time, which is a new topic, which is crypto assets. The session we have organized as to the assessment of reforms, the idea is that having passed 10 years after the beginning of uh, an implementation of regulations in the financial structure that ended with the approval in Basel III in December, this was a good year to say, why, why don't we devaluate what has been the result of those reforms? Have they gone too far? Though we have to go back, we have to go deeper into certain aspects? an assessment of what has been going on. However, in the midst of that debate, under the leadership of the Financial Stability Board uh, that has been commissioned to, to carry out that task, we have the question of the crypto assets and what to go to do about them. So do we have to regulate them or not? We received a strong mandate that it's uh, an issue to be uh, closely looked at. And the um, whole divided into two, they, are, they were not exclusive and uh, com uh, compatible. Uh, the one that has to do with regulation, to look at markets, cybersecurity, the question of uh, data, operational deal, transaction uh, security, um, money laundering, all the things that are related to crypto assets. And then there was another one that was related to well, now we have crypto assets. What happens to traditional methods of payment? Why traditional methods of payment are somehow moving forward partially and crypto assets are uh, moving on to the methods of payment? So we have to improve on the international methods of payment. We talked about commissioning banks, uh, remittances. We talked about methods of payment, systems of payment, to improve uh, multilaterally and international, at an international level, these in integrations, because then its non-existence makes crypto assets to have a niche on which they can operate. So I'm saying this to just illustrate the richness of the re debate. Um, we have a very busy agenda for July because, for example, in this theme, uh, there is a demand on July to have recommendations, specific recommendations on what to do. And I would land with a sentence. I'm not going to say who said this, but I thought it was fantastic. Somebody said, we have to assume these topics because change has never been as fast as it is today. We have never seen as fast as fast changes as we have seen today, and we are not going to see them as low as we are seeing them today. In the future, um, um, changes are going to be faster and faster, and um, we are surprised now, but tomorrow we are going to be surprised, and we are going to say, oh, how good it was a year ago when it was so slow. That was a bit the spirit of discussion that I think was very productive, and I agree with Nicolas that everybody left very pleased, very satisfied. It was very good meeting. Let's begin with the questions now. I'm sorry, but we cannot hear the questions from the booth.
the communique does not mention multilateralism. Is there a reference to protectionism? I'm sorry, but it's not audible from the booth. Thank you very much. Essentially, we kept the language that we had already used during the Leaders' Summit in Hamburg in terms of rejecting, rejecting competitive devaluations as a trade mechanism, but also to highlight that international trade are important drivers to the growth of uh, development, employment, and that we need a dialogue, to keep a dialogue regarding the actions to be taken. So this is the vision that we have adopted, that we, we adopted in Hamburg, and it is clear that the consensus that the world had up until G20 in Germany are no longer the same. Um, within the disagreements, there is a framework for dialogue that has that is provided by G20 and where we reassert the positive spirit on international trade. I would like to add that what we have felt was a very constructive view in terms of international trade. Other question? Natasha. There is a looming trade war due to Trump's protectionist policies. What's your opinion on this regard? The feeling I have is the first session we had yesterday was to discuss precisely that. And the feeling that I had was that there was a very constructive spirit, a very cooperative spirit of understanding the particular aspects of the positions of the different countries with their, an awareness of all the players to work towards um, international trade. So I, I feel very much at ease that uh, that constructive and coordinated spirit is prevalent in the agenda. And President Macri reviewed all the changes Argentina has had, the will of Argentina to reintegrate in the world the relevance of G20 as a forum to solve problems, as a forum to solve problems, and the role of Argentina of an honest mediator, as he said, in inter at international debates. And I think this is the way uh, we have tackled it. He also said that we took this presidency with a lot of humbleness. And it's an environment, uh, it's a milieu for discussion, and we have to ensure that communication flows. And that, we think, is the mature role of Argentina this year in particular. Regardless of the conversations of G20, Argentina reasserts its commitment with multilateralism and with trade based on rules and to the adherence to OMC of the World Trade Organization's regulations. We have not um, talked about any additional mechanism. We have. Uh, reiterated the uh, Treasury Min Secretary of the United States to revise the inclusion of Argentina within the um, 
a tariff on steel and aluminum to put it on at zero. So we are expecting a resolution from the United States in a future that it doesn't have to be near future, but we have reasserted that request. Regardless of this, um, we have not talked about an, uh, an international trade war. The United States talked about safety issues in a very small part of its uh, international trade. And it's not that there is a vision that we are entering into a trade war, war at global level. I'm sorry, but questions are not audible from the booth. At this moment, negotiations for um, trade agreement between Mercosur and European Europe is not being carried out by, individu by countries individually, but by the political org um, bodies of Mercosur and the European Union Committee in charge of the negotiations, not countries individually. We reassert our optimistic view with reference to the possibility, the close possibility of an agreement, we are working towards that objective. Our next meeting of the uh, different bodies that are uh, negotiating uh, between Mercosur and the European Union is going to take place in the month of April. And we see with a lot of optimism the advances of negotiations. One topic we talked about was uh, trade, uh, service trade. That was an agenda that was somehow lagging behind regarding, with reference to the other discussions on commerce. And what we expect from the rest of the presidency is to have a commitment of the G20, an ongoing commitment with trade as an instrument for progress integra and integration with the world. And Argentina's objective is going to be that because uh, that's our commitment and that's part of the spirit that comes from the meetings. Precisely so. That was the discussion we had today in the morning. And we there was a discussion regarding of crypto assets or cryptocurrencies. We talk about cryptocurrencies in Argentina, but it's very strong to speak about crypto assets because they highlighted because none of these uh, assets do not play the role of a currency. We included an innovation uh, that was a survey we carried out, anonymous polls at the beginning of the meetings. At the, basically, was this a point to be tackled, to be focused on? Is this focused on multilateralism? Basically, the regulation or the supervision of crypto assets. And it was very strong, the support they have to be um, added in multilateral issues. Crypto uh, assets could be a channel for the funding of terrorism or the of money laundering. And those are essential points in the multilateral agenda. But as I said, uh, crypto assets agenda divided into two. One was to focus two axes. Uh, with Nicolas, we received a very strong mandate. In July, we have to offer very concrete, very specific uh, ideas of how we are going not to regulate, but what are the data we need, what are the institutions that should be supervising 
the Financial Stability Board, Yoho, FTF. Uh, I mean, there was a whole discussion on that we have to see this, and they asked us to um, give proposals in July and on on this issue. But there was another agenda that, uh, as I said, is not excluding but complementary to this. The agenda for the improvements of, me of traditional methods of payments. Let me give you an example. Remittances. If method, traditional pay, payments, methods of payment cannot generate in an inexpensive uh, way, uh, that would be a, a position or a possibility for crypto assets to capture this possibility. So there is a very positive agenda that we have this new player and makes methods of payment to improve and to be aware of this and to work on improvements. Um, remittances is a multilateral agenda also. So it was very rich debate. It was very explicit in the request for recommendations to for Argentina and the different uh, task forces that are working Gracias for the July meeting. I'm sorry, but the questions are still not audible. Imposition of custom tariffs. I would say discussion was much broader. We have not talked about tariffs on steel and aluminum. What we reasserted at G20 is the positive view on international trade to create employment, work, producti productivity. But we have not discussed specific measures. But just like we were able to have this positive view on trade, we also were able to come to a consensus on the need for the G20 to continue moving forward to generate the new ways to impose on to tax on digital economy that could be um, uh, a terrain for controversies. You know that there is uh, a vacuum there with the emergence of new, uh, the emergence of new companies that produce in the cloud, they generate value in different countries, and now that has a vacuum in terms of how to levy taxes on those activities. So we were able to work with a preliminary report from the um, OECD, OECD, and that's the way G20 works, to try to come to an agreement, to, ar to arrive to consensus. It's not we're going to produce regulations, but to come to an agreement, to different agreements, and that brings about um, for different bodies to generate the necessary regulations, bodies that work jointly with G20. Well, thank you very much.